Well, last night on Serious Country, we heard from Alan van der Nagel from Fonterra, and we were talking about the 770 jobs wanted collectively across processing, tanker drivers, and on farm uh, for farm workers through Farm Source. The pressure is real across New Zealand as dairy farmers are facing the pressures of calving and the milking season ahead. Without the vital migrant dairy farm workers, we have come to rely on, of course, because of our border closures. A $3.5 million campaign being run by Dairy NZ has recently been launched to try and get over 1,000 locals into fill these on-farm jobs. The original Taratahi farm training facility that went into liquidation has reopened its doors to house multiple opportunities, uh, including the Go Dairy program uh, as one. People leader from Dairy NZ, Jane Muir, joins us now to discuss the latest initiatives uh, and one of them exclusively tonight first to Sarah's country Jane good evening and thank you for joining us firstly can yeah. you could you please tell good us evening, good evening can you please tell us about the real pressure that uh, employers are currently facing Oh yeah, look, it's very real. The, the the border closure had a massive impact on dairy farming and uh, it's just meant we were expecting hundreds of people across the border. They haven't been able to come. A little bit of that pressure has been relieved by the government announcing um, visa extensions through for, for six months through to the 31st of December. But uh, we were already short-staffed and that, that's still no new people really coming in. So uh, we're, uh, we're under pressure and we're in the middle of our busiest season right now. So when you said you're already short-staffed, is this because migrant workers weren't filling the need generally? Uh, the, the reason we were short-staffed even going into COVID was because uh, just the unemployment rate is so low and there's still quite stringent procedures about bringing migrants across the border. So uh, it's not the it's, it, it doesn't fix all the problems, it just was helping us, but we still had gaps. Uh, the borders shut and those gaps got, got a lot bigger. Okay, so there has been initiatives, and I mentioned the Go Dairy campaign, Dairy NZ's campaign, uh, to relieve this pressure. How has it been going since launch? Oh, look, it's going great. The, um, the, 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 the feedback from the program is awesome. The, the trainees are loving it. They are so impressed with how much there is to know in dairy, like the breadth of, you know, what dairy contributes to the economy, what's involved in the day-to-day -day life of a dairy farmer and how many tasks they're juggling and, the, the, you know, how much they're responsible for. And also really excited when they get into the practical training, just enjoying that hands-on role and really seeing it all come alive. So the feedback from trainees has been has been awesome. The, um, and Equally pleasingly, employers that have had exposure to the people coming through the training are just saying, wow, we can't believe how much they've learned in three weeks. Like um, they've come in with a really solid understanding, confidence to ask questions, um, and their ability, you know, they have thought about is dairy a good fit for them? They've decided it is, and then they've made the step into a role on farm, and uh, those employers have been delighted. Fantastic qualified um, employee applications. Something yes. that I'm sure that. What does fit for a purpose training look like under Go Dairy? What type of skill sets are you um, enabling them with before they hit the farm? Oh. Yeah, so the first week is all online and it's really giving them a concept of the role that dairy does play, what a day in the life looks like of a dairy farmer, what living rurally is like, um, how to look for a good job, like what are rosters, that, that's a really common question, what do rosters look like on dairy farms, um, and also the use of technology, so we cover all those things. Then in the practical training, it's a lot about how cows have senses just like you and I and how they can almost see behind their heads things like that understanding the way that they move and how you need to move around them um, so practicing drafting um, understanding body condition score so putting your hands over cows and understanding what that feels like a healthy cow and what wouldn't be um, and then things like looking around the farm at the different key parts of, of the farm what happens at those different parts like feeding stations in the paddock what does 10 kilos of grass look like in a pile? Um, all those things that, you know, some of us take for granted having grown up on farms, but it's really a new, exciting world for people. Okay. And then the, um, there's also a week about vehicles. So getting some practice using the vehicles that we use on our farms every day. Fantastic. I was just thinking to myself, there's the, it could be employers going, oh, goodness, the new people I've just employed on my, can I send them on this course as well? Because that sounds very um, comprehensive and across the board. Um, is there potential that you can open this up for sort of an apprenticeship type element? 
Absolutely. And in fact, people that were um, have landed on farm in roles from the 1st of May and landed there because they were impacted by COVID do qualify for this training. So even if they've got employed, they're employed on farm currently, um, we're saying come back and get off to that great start because learn this stuff that will set you up to, you know, to build your confidence and your skills so that then you can be a better employee. That's where the, the whole program is aimed at attracting people to dairy that um, want to work there and that have the skills to learn there and building capability in our sector. Uh, so I understand that about 150 people have completed the online course so far and already got jobs. I'd love to know their background. What type of people are they? Oh, look, there's, there's everything. I mean, I guess it's probably true. Uh, lots of males, females, all types of ethnicities. Um they do have to be a New Zealand resident or citizen. That is one of the requirements of the program. Um, probably the most people are in their 20s and 30s, but we've also had a, a few late teenagers and people in 40s and 50s. Um, their stories are baristas, taxi drivers, tourism bus operators um, from aviation. <laughs> Obviously, that's a hot topic at the moment. Uh, pretty much you name it, they come, you know, property managers, um, an array of people have come to the training. So it's been, like, it's quite... It's quite awesome, the individual stories, and just watching them. Some of them have always thought about working in dairy but never had the confidence to try or the opportunity to try, like try before you buy sort of style, which is, this is what that is. It's about seeing, is this a good fit for you and is it something you want to find more out of course, about? Well, of course, attitude is a huge thing, but mm. I'd love to know what were their preconceived ideas about what it, a role in dairy would be and that they found were pleasantly surprising? I think probably the biggest thing that they're finding is just the sort of the complexity of, you know, dairy farming is is so much to it. And I think they are finding, wow, like, you know, there's a lot to think about when you're a farmer. And um, the jobs are far more interesting than um, most farms don't, they're not just milking cows. Well, no farm is just milking cows, but even entry level roles predominantly aren't, aren't doing just milking cows. So I think it's really that you know, the, the breadth of the role and the breadth of the importance of dairy to New Zealand and the impact it pays in everyday lives and even how, you know, that paddock to plate kind of concept until you're really faced with somebody talking about it, people don't really think think it through. Um, as I say, you do if you, if you grow up on a farm, but otherwise you don't. And so just that whole concept and um, how, yeah, what a, what a great industry and interesting industry we are. Mm, yeah, absolutely. You're right. When you grow up and you're immersed in it, we know this stuff every day, but you don't know what you don't know. Um, just touching on Taratahi, it's uh, been in the media just recently with Minister Damien O'Connor uh, doing a stand up there to say that the use of this venue is now being used for multiple people. How is Dairy NZ utilising this uh, past closed facility to your advantage? Yes, so we've got um, training running there last week and this week. Um, so we've got participants living in in Teratahi. So our farm ready the practical weeks, the second and third weeks of that training, um, are housed at Teratahi and being delivered by UCOL, which is an NZQA accredited provider in the region. So um, it's really awesome to see and to see that um, being used again, Teratahi, and um, it, that provides. Uh, an option for those people that need to live in. So they are living in for those two weeks. Um, I also know it's being used for taster courses, for the Opportunity Grows Here MPI campaign, which is a primary sector campaign, and the rural contractors are doing some training, which is being hosted on Teratahi as well. Fantastic. It's excellent to see that uh, valuable uh, resource being used. I yes. have here in front of me a brand new Rural Employee Support Hub being launched tomorrow by Dairy NZ. A uh, bit of a scoop here on Serious Country. Thank you. Can you tell us about the website uh, ruralemployeesupport.co.nz and how that will take it one step further uh, to encourage and support those coming into the industry? Oh, yeah, look, this is um, an absolute um, exciting initiative, this. So what the, the, the website is a place where people, employees can jump on, they can find out answers to lots of their questions right there and then, but they can also send an email through to um, to the support hub where, the, where they would get their response answered to, whether by phone or by email, whatever there is their preference. But there is a lot of information to support them right then, from things like food and nutrition, um, work-life balance, um, you know, how to grow in your career, 
like pretty much you name it, it's there. And it links to a lot of other cool resources that Dairy NZ and others in the primary sector have available, but it is specifically for employees. And this is fantastic to continue along the campaigns such as the Good Boss campaign. So if you're a dairy farm employee, uh, not currently seeking employment, but have, may have been in the industry for a couple of years, this 0800 number and website applies to you too, doesn't it, in terms of yeah. finding out what is fair and reasonable? Yeah, absolutely. Look, this um, this is set up. We think employers are very well catered for in dairy, and um, we just want to have a place where employees can get confidential and impartial advice. Um, they might be interested in how they could grow their career. They might have questions about their employment, and there's no question too big or too small. So this is a it's a six month pilot. It's funded by Dairy NZ and MPI. Um, it is called the Rural Employee Support Hub, um, and. You know, like I just, we, we really encourage employees to pick up the phone, send an email, jump on the website and get in touch because we don't want, um, we, we can answer your questions. So please ask and um, let's support each other in, in the journey of um, be, um, being great employees on farms and having um, great employment relationships. Fantastic. What a great initiative. So ruralemployeesupport.co.nz or 0800 employee advice uh, are those numbers and, of course, yep. websites to go to. Thank you yep. so much. So I'll just say that that is 0800 694 is the phone number. Cool. Fantastic. Thank you so much for all that you do in the background. Jane Muir, people leader there at Dairy NZ. This is Sarah's Country.